Hi, I'm Patrick Miser. I'm the VP of Software Engineering here at Sparefoot. Hi, I'm Steve Woodruff, and I'm a DevOps Automation Engineer here at Sparefoot. Uh, we are the largest uh, self-storage marketplace uh, in the world. So all of our services and applications in Sparefoot run in, uh, in Amazon Web Services and AWS. Uh, we used to have a lot of EC2 instances. Uh, at one point, we had over 100 EC2 instances that we were managing, uh, trying to take care of upgrades and maintenance of those. Um, when we moved to the container-based architecture, now we have like a dozen uh, EC2 instances that we really care about, and all the same services and applications uh, run on those same servers. They're larger instances, but it gives us you know a lot more control on how we manage these guys, and we can ensure that everything is up to date and patched, so that we don't have any you know, exposures to vulnerabilities. So we knew we needed to pick some sort of orchestration tool. We chose Rancher because you know it met our core requirements of you know speaking Docker Compose, uh, being easy to set up. Uh, it allowed us to host you know, the containers in our own cloud, and it just worked. A big part of all this was, uh, was to go find something that would be accessible to the developers and um, something that would, um, I think, foster a, a better understanding around how Docker um, would be operating in production. I saw quite a few aha moments when you could actually sort of visualize um, Right, how the load balancers were being deployed across the individual hosts and how the containers were being deployed and sort of um, provide a visual aspect to the way that, that Rancher um, handles scheduling. Some other benefits that you know, I've noticed from an ops perspective is the, there's been a sense or a shift in the sense of ownership. Right? This used to be the ops team owned all the servers and whenever there was any sort of issue, you know, ops team was the first to triage it, figure out what's going on. And now with uh, this container-based architecture, there's a shift and the developers are owning their applications and their services in production. Uh, with Rancher, every product team or development team is deploying to production ad hoc, at will, whenever they want during the day. Uh, they control it, they own it, they can determine whether it worked and whether they need to roll back. I think we were both going into this waiting for the, the big moment that things were going to fail and things were going to get hard. And, um, you know, the fact that that never happened and, and we were able to, um, you know, not only make a huge architectural change um, from, a, from a, moving from a monolith to a, a microservices distributed architecture, um, but also make the move to, to, to you know, using a, a new technology in Docker and, and using Rancher. It surpassed um, all of our expectations and um, made things, makes things much easier than we, we thought they were going to be. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to speak for Steve around how he feels about, uh, about Docker now, but um, hey, we're, we're, we're in production and I think um, the, the, the tooling that, um, and orchestration that Rancher provided was a, was a big part of that and, and converting Steve here into a believer. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably a Docker convert, but I'm definitely a Rancher convert, so.